video interfacing of a relay with the micro bit in this video we will learn about the two channel relay module then we will learn about the need for optocouplers in a relay module and finally we will learn to interface the relay with the micro bit before we discuss the interfacing and projects in this section please do check out the resources section to get the full list of components needed to finish this section we are already familiar with how the relay works you can see a two channel relay module in my hand two channel relay module is just a circuit in which two separate relays are provided this allows controlling of two devices at a time thus more the number of channels more the number of devices we can connect let's take a closer look at the components of a two channel relay if you look closely you can see two 3 pin smds also known as surface mounted devices they are labeled q1 and q2 if you look much closer you can see j3y written on the component can you guess what it is q1 and q2 are npn transistors which form the switching circuit for each of the relays if you remember from the last video we have explained how a forward base voltage drives the transistor to saturation and allows the current to flow through the coil inside the relay d1 and d2 are known as flyback diodes one for each relay they are used to protect the components from sudden spikes of voltage consider a situation where the relay coil is fully energized now when the relay switches off the collapsing magnetic field induces a reverse current which creates an over voltage due to the open circuit the open circuit condition happens when the transistor is suddenly turned off it is equivalent to having an infinite resistance path by ohm's law this results in a sudden spike in reverse voltage that can damage the components of the switching circuit the r2 and r4 are the resistors that form the common emitter configuration of the relay's switching circuit the r1 and r3 are pull up resistors for the optocouplers we will discuss this later in this video itself the in1 and in2 leds are used to show the status of the relay that is whether it is energized or not if you look very closely the two black 4 pin smds are labeled as 817c 1612 ams they are known as optocouplers this 4 pin chip will always be added in any module that has a relay so what is the relation between a relay and an optocoupler an optocoupler is also known as an opto isolator on the inside it consists of an infrared led and a photosensitive transistor we already know that a relay provides electrical isolation between the low voltage control circuit and a high voltage driver circuit this isolation is called galvanic isolation but there are still situations where this isolation is broken one of the main reasons for shorting is the formation of electrical arcs inside the relay when a sudden spike of voltage is induced in the relay's coil the air molecules inside the relay are ionized and they conduct electricity in the form of sparks or arcs this can permanently damage components connected to the relay so to provide an extra layer of galvanic isolation we will use an optocoupler in the switching circuit this figure shows the full circuit of a relay module with the optocoupler included you might have noticed that the configuration makes the relay module an active low device what it means is that the relay will be activated only when the input signal is pulled to ground the anode of the infrared led is pulled up to the vcc and the cathode becomes the input control pin which will be controlled by a microcontroller to know the significance of active low in electronics please check out the resources section of this video you can see that the jd vcc pin and vcc pin is shorted with a jumper by default if you go back and look at the completer circuit you can see that the jd vcc is connected to the collector of the photosensitive transistor inside the optocoupler
The jumper is used either to enable or disable the optocoupler from the circuit. If you remove the jumper, the relay stops working. We can also provide voltage to the transistor directly based on the optocoupler used. This is done by supplying the voltage directly to JDVCC after removing the jumper. Now let's interface the micro bit with the two channel relay. The two channel relay has four pins to interface with micro bit. VCC, ground, IN1 and IN2. The relay module needs 5 volts input at the VCC pin and more than 20 milliamperes of current to work. But the micro bit can only provide 3.3 volts at a maximum of 25 milliamperes current. This is why we need an external power supply to provide the obvious deficit in voltage. Here we are going to use a popular external power supply board called the MB102 breadboard power supply. To know more about this power supply and why we use it, please check out the links in the resources section. Connect the 5 volt pin of the power supply to the VCC pin of the relay module. Then connect the GND pin of the power supply to the GND pin of the relay module. Now we will connect a jumper wire from another GND pin of the power supply to 0V of the micro bit. So, now the micro bit, the relay module and the power supply all share the same ground pin. In this section, we will use the digital pin 8 and pin 16 of the micro bit to control the relay. So, connect IN1 pin of the relay to the pin 8 of the micro bit. Next, connect IN2 pin of the relay to pin 16 of the micro bit. To know why we use these specific pins, check out the link in the resources section. We have now finished interfacing the micro bit with the relay. Summary In this video, we covered the following topics. The two-channel relay module, the need for an optocoupler in the relay module, interfacing the relay module with the micro bit. In the next video, we will create an automatic night light project with the micro bit using the relay module.